I'm Peter Block at TCT in Denver, Colorado for On the Scene. With me is Holger Thiele from Leipzig, Germany. And uh, Dr. Thiele has probably reported on at least the most provocative uh, trial here at TCT. So, Holger, tell me what your trial was and then we'll talk about the results and what it means. Yeah, so we did a randomized trial in patients with cardiogenic shock, which is now with 706 patients uh, largest trial ever performed in a uh, randomized trial ever performed in cardiogenic shock and we randomized patients with acute cardiogenic shock with acute myocardial infarction with multivessel coronary artery disease to either um, immediate multivessel PCI which is currently recommended in guidelines and also appropriate use criteria versus carpet lesion only PCI with possible stage revascularization and our primary study endpoint was 30-day mortality or the requirement for renal replacement therapy for severe renal failure. And our trial showed that we challenged the guidelines so that carpet lesion only PCI reduced the primary study endpoint um, of renal failure and 30-day um, mortality significantly. And this was mainly driven by a 8% mortality reduction for patients with a carpet lesion only PCI. Well, let me interrupt because uh, this is a good trial. I mean, this isn't just a junk trial. This was very carefully done, a good randomized trial with 600 plus patients. So uh, the data that come out of this trial are really very, I would say surprising, possibly provocative for sure, uh, because it does go against certainly the European guidelines. American guidelines don't have anything about this in them, but the appropriateness criteria say it is appropriate to do multivessel disease and do it all at once. So what are your thoughts? Going forward, uh, how do you feel about all this? Do you think that guidelines need to be changed? Do you think that the, we need further studies? What are your thoughts? Um, if you look for a 8% mortality decrease with carpet lesion only PCI, I'm sure that the guidelines need to be changed. Um, we will see what the guidelines will do, but if you look for the criteria for guidelines, this sh um, should, uh, I'm relatively sure that this will influence the current guidelines, in particular the European guidelines, which currently give a 2AC recommendation. C means we have no data. Um, but people believe that it may be beneficial, but now we have shown that it does not work, and so from this perspective, the guidelines should be changed. Okay, so uh, one practical question, because I know in the uh, culprit-only group, you had the option of coming back and doing uh, later PCI on the other vessels. Yeah. Talk about that a bit. Um, this is probably important that we allow this in the study protocol to do stage revascularization, which is totally different from all the trials in patients with STEMI um, without cardiogenic shock, where usually stage revascularization was included um, in the um, study endpoint. So this is a soft endpoint. I'm looking for another um, repeat revascularization. And for in our trial, this was allowed and this was also recommended. So 17% of the patients um, with carpal lesion only PCI underwent stage revascularization within the first 30 days. And, but this was not counted um, as an endpoint. This is just um, according to protocol. And th this is what I personally believe. This is also clinical practice. If you have a patient with a blocked RCA, which is the infarct-related artery, and you have a 90% stenosis of the proximal ED, you should go for it. Yeah? And this is what we inc um, was incorporated in our um, study protocol. Okay, and the message here is go for it, but at a later date, not at the first yeah. time around. All right, well, thank you very much, Holger. Uh, this is a provocative trial, an interesting trial. It goes against a lot of what we have thought, yeah. and I think we'll change practice. So thank you so much for coming and spending time. Pleasure.